My name's Kevin, 21, uh, and I don't know how to read. Um, <laughs> no, 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 I do. I'm a grad student, and I'm a part-time engineer. My name is Austin, and I'm 23, and I'm single and have been my entire life. My name is Monroe. I go by Mo for most people. I am gender fluid. I use she or they pronouns, and I also live with bipolar disorder. My name is Beverly. I identify as bisexual and I am currently single. I can only speak in the context of like my culture and my time period. I've noticed, and from my own experiences, we focus a lot on, oh, if I'm attracted to this person, that means that we're meant to be together. The attraction has to be there to encourage you guys to pursue a connection. But the pursuit is really important, like getting, actually getting to know each other. Because the point of dating and like connecting with each other and learning about each other should be, are we compatible in like a long-term way? We have to be more deliberate and we also have to, but we also have to trust that in the natural entropy of things. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, that's okay because you figure out what doesn't work for you. I know I always held up my parents as an ideal and I've had many a tear-filled conversation with my mom on the phone about well you know I'm already you know this age and you were married by blah 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 and you guys have been together for 30 years and she kind of always has to keep reminding me that life doesn't happen the same way for everyone instead of being vulnerable and genuinely being like okay I'm gonna go into this getting to know this person and genuinely wanting to know them and letting them know me and then deciding if we're meant to be together it's oh I know we're good together because I'm attracted to you. I'm going to pretend to be this other person or try and be what I think you want me to be or try to impress you or like suppress parts of my personality to make this into something it isn't. It's kind of like pouring starter fluid over a, over a fire and then letting it match as opposed to building all the logs, getting the kindling and getting it all in order before you can actually, you know, light a match and, you know, let it go. Because that fire that you build, that you take all the time to build, it's going to last a lot longer than if you just, you know, decided to go and burn up a bunch of kerosene over it. It's all about managing expectations. If you love someone, you shouldn't feel the need to go through their phone or be worried when they go out with friends. Some misconceptions of love I've noticed and experienced is that love is controlling and jealous and angry. If someone is treating you poorly, uh, or someone is ignoring you, like that means they want you more. And I, I, when you plain speak it like that, that sounds terrible. And no, like uh, people would agree, like no, that's not what we're actually saying. But you are socializing from small children that, oh, if he pulls your pigtail, it means he likes you because he doesn't know how to express his feelings. And I think the idea that men don't know how to properly express their feelings is a really dangerous misconception. It's like it's so hard to connect with other human beings. And then you throw toxic masculinity on the fire. It's just like, oh, I cannot stand it if I feel like a guy is being fake with me or he's like, has a wall up and, but is also being like, no, I'm being real with you. And it's like, no, you're not. And that's what toxic masculinity does. It's basically like, you aren't allowed to feel and be a human because I place so much value on vulnerability and being, having people share things with me and having people share emotional experiences with me and feeling honestly with me, that if he can't do that and it's like a perpetual struggle for us, then like it literally destroys the whole relationship. Most men do know how, and the ones who are abusive uh, and harmful to their partners, um, that's usually a choice. It's not that they don't know how to properly express their emotions, it's that they're choosing not to express them in a healthy way. Love is about trust above all things and allowing your partner to live their life. You're not going to stay with someone if they don't treat you right. They can tell you they love you all day long, but if they treat you like garbage, then they don't love you. The way that you know, my parents show each other love, they, they show it in really quiet but really very clear ways. Like my mother will tell me that your father doesn't, your father is too busy, he's too tired, I'm going to go and put away his shirts. 
My father, for example, he wanted to purchase a car for her. It takes on average about a year to, to get from the time you order to when it arrives. And he says, Kevin, I know the person that we're going to call to have it here in a week. And he did. <laughs> and then he surprised my mother with it. When I think of love, I think of my mother, the sacrifices that she made for all three of us, uh, me and my brothers. And then I also think about the relationship that she and my dad have, because that is really an incredible, incredible uh, love story. I think about dogs, how they are happy for you, even if you mess up. How they worry when you leave, but they are happy, so happy to see you return every single time. If you're angry at them, they do everything they can to make it up to you, even if it's strange. They are the epitome of unconditional love. The first thing that comes to mind is God, which may sound really cheesy um, and like Christianese, but like I think it's true. Like for me, God is an all encompassing um, feeling of love. Be there, listen, not necessarily give advice unless I ask for it. I sort of need to work through it with a sound with a soundboard. And then other times if I'm upset, I just need to be held. I was going through a really rough time and uh, the, the person that I was dating at the time said, let's go home, let's go get food, and we'll go lie in bed. And then that's all, that's all we're gonna do today. And that's, that's what I needed at the time. Cuddles and kisses mean the world to me, more so than anything else more so than words. My husband knows it's hard for me to sleep without some kind of touch, but we both get way too hot to cuddle all through the night. So we actually sleep butt to butt so that our butts are touching, but nothing else is touching so that we don't get hot at night. And I can still have that touch sensation that I need. If I'm close to you, my love language is physical touch. Like I love hugging and like I hold my friend's hands all the time. And also vulnerability. The way that I can tell when someone like really trusts me and like cares about me as a friend is when they share something really vulnerable with me. Like they share a story from their childhood or they tell me about a fear they have or something that they're concerned about and like them sharing that with me. It's like, oh, they really trust me. So that's how I know that we have like a deep connection. They just text me and say, hey, what's up? Uh, maybe, do you want to hang out? Show an interest in spending time with, the, with, the, with each other. That's my way of showing love. My mother views love as you know this enduring thing that you've built up after so much time, after everything is right, after you've spent all this time getting to just know the foundation, the fundamentals of the person, to you know, figuring out how they work together and building up to an actual future. Self-love means accepting when you fail and trying to spin it into something positive. Telling yourself that, yes, I screwed up, but this is a learning moment and I will do better because of next time. Maybe we responded with anger when we should have responded with compassion, or even just we made a mistake or made a wrong choice or said something mean. So I think self-love is being patient with yourself and forgiving yourself, but also taking the time to better yourself. Um, and that also means in relation to, I'm going to learn how to be kinder to myself. And then also allowing other people to love you. For every time that we are destructive, we also need to be healthy. Finding healthier ways to cope. Eat an actual meal, get some vegetables, drink water, sleep a full eight hours of sleep and get out of bed. Take a shower, put on some fresh clothes. And you're just taking care of yourself the way you know you need to be taken care of in that moment. My beliefs about love have changed a lot through trial and error and it took me a long time to realize that love shouldn't be controlling and jealous. That a healthy relationship is built on mutual respect through working together to make the team better and more successful in life. It's the pressure to get into an established relationship. I couldn't commit to a uh, long term because I'm just so busy. I got all of this that I want to build for myself before I can build with one another. So have a good have a good time being you and just being alone and just kind of, you know, exploring all the hobbies and side hustles that you can get up to and like develop yourself. So I think I probably definitely used to think about love in a very idealized and rom-com sort of way. I was about to say I think I'm a little more jaded. 
But really, no, not so much. I think I'm still very idealistic and I still see the best in everyone despite sort of the rocky experiences I've had. Not even like when the relationship is bad or there's like unhealthy things about it. Like you can have like a really good connection with somebody, but like you guys are only meant to be friends. I actually told, and I, and I told my partner, I was like, I don't want to do this. Like I only got so much energy to go up to this and this and this. And, and she said, we don't have to see each other again. And I was like, okay. But then all of a sudden we brought back to, let's, let's just, let's just, hang out, we can be friends, we can we can live in the moment. Like if anything happens, then it happens, but until then just not trying let's not try to force it. Love appears in so many ways in my life. With my husband, it's making sure I have a cup of water on my side table every night and making dinner because I get home late. With my friends it's checking in when they haven't heard from me in a while or sending me videos of their dogs. With my family it's inviting me over for dinner because they miss me or letting me do laundry at their house for free. For so long I really really didn't like being with myself. I didn't find myself interesting. I didn't find joy in being by myself. But the older I've gotten the more I've learned to enjoy my own company and I could very much see myself being happy with my own company for my entire life or with the company of someone else.